microwave is faster rapid heat uh, second radio frequency does not cause carbonization microwave if used at higher wattage can cause carbonization the tissue will die but it will not shrink as well if we de destroy the autonomous nodule with ablation high chances that the patient will get cured of the hypothyroidism the patient will become a youth thyroid patient without the risk of going excessively hypothyroid but personal experience we are getting closer to that with using microwave with being more careful at the margin some technical refinements Hello and warm welcome to Medicinas podcast where we bring you insightful conversation with leading experts in medical field. Hi, I'm your host Dr. Smarika Bhatt and today we are examining the controversial world of thyroid nodule ablation technique. To help us navigate these concerns, we are joined by Dr. Gaurav Gangwani. Dr. Gaurav has trained at some of the finest institutions in the country and has experience from workshops and conferences in New Zealand, Japan and America. Dr. Gaurav, welcome to the podcast. We are excited to have you here. Thank you so much for the invite and glad to share some insights on the topic. Likewise, Dr. So without further ado, we'll start with our first question. Yeah. So, Dr. Gaurav, many of our listeners uh, may have heard about different type of ablation techniques for thyroid nodules. Could you help us explain the impedance feedback mechanism differ between radio frequency and microwave ablation? Yeah, sure. So, for some of the viewers who may be relatively new to thyroid nodule ablation, I'll just touch upon the introduction of this uh, technique, especially for thyroid nodules. And then, of course, we'll talk somewhat on the impedance. So basically, we have been using the technology of thermal ablation using laser at first and then radio frequency and microwave technology later for a lot of diseases, especially cancers like liver cancers or hepatic cellular carcinomas, uh, renal carcinomas, uh, lung carcinomas. Sometimes we have used cryoablation or freezing the tumor to kill it. So it is a very famous technique for all these tumors. Uh, but when it comes to thyroid nodules, the gold standard therapy had always been hemithyroidectomy for benign nodules. Uh, that is when always uh, uh, intervention was sought, a minimally invasive intervention alternative, where you do not need to remove the thyroid, take lifelong medication, etc. And thyroid nodule ablation technique was introduced. Initially, there were challenges where doing it like treating the liver cancer was difficult because if you try to burn the nodule in one go, you will end up causing thermal damage to many adjacent structures like the recurrent laryngeal nerve causing voice change, median cervical sympathetic ganglion causing Horner syndrome, tosses, anhydrosis, meiosis. That is when a Korean scientist and doctor uh, died, um, invented this technique known as moving shot technique where piece by piece, so, uh, one circum small circumference at a time, we destroy the thyroid nodule with heat either using radio frequency or microwave ablation. And since then, of course, it's been probably lakhs of cases all across the world. Korea, China, Italy leading it in the forefront, but many of us now following with high volume centers and it's working great. So luckily, unlike uh, visceral intervention, the impedance is not a great issue in thyroid nodule ablation because we don't need much impedance feedback because we are doing a moving shot technique usually at low wattages 40 50 watts for rfa uh, and 20 to 30 watts for microwave so we just trust the cloud that forms the thermal cloud uh, post heat and we keep rotating our needle position so that we cover the whole circumference of the nodule and destroy it uh, eventually causing it to shrink and disappear uh, the only difference between radio frequency and microwave is that radio frequency is good but slightly slower, controlled heat. Microwave is faster, rapid heat. Uh, second, radio frequency does not cause carbonization. Microwave, if used at higher wattage, can cause carbonization. The tissue will die, but it will not shrink as well. So that's the major difference between the two modalities, impedance-wise. Uh, there is no feedback that we need. We trust the eyeballing and based on the cloud, we keep rotating our antenna. That's a very helpful context you have given, Dr. Gaurav. So moving on to the next question. When should autonomous thyroid nodule receive thermal ablation versus a radio uh, iodine therapy? Yeah. So uh, like a tumor board in oncology, we sort of have a multidisciplinary team discussions if there are customized personal cases. 
usually if autonomous nodule is proven on scintigraphy that this is a single nodule fairly small to moderate size which is the autonomous or toxic nodule and is causing the hypothyroidism then i would today almost for 99% cases prefer ablation over radioactive iodine the advantage is uh, major advantage is that we do not if we de destroy the autonomous nodule with ablation high chances that the patient will get cured of the hypothyroidism the patient will become a youth thyroid patient without the risk of going excessively hypothyroid radioactive iodine the amount of radioactive iodine required for this kind of autonomous nodule is so high that most of these patients become hypothyroid for life and have to take medications for the same so the major advantage of ablation over radioactive iodine is that uh, you uh, do not need to take any medication for life you can almost become youth thyroid yes the success rates in clinical success rates in literature patient turning youth thyroid is around 86% plus it's yet not 100% but personal experience we are getting closer to that with using microwave with being more careful at the margin some technical refinements we have yet to see a patient in whom our technology has failed so it's working great for us that was a great insight so now let's discuss something more complex what about uh, recurrent thyroid uh, cancers what ablation protocols modification work best for the recurrent thyroid cancers that are unsuitable for surgeries yes so there are uh, earlier ablation was only approved for benign goitals or nodules but then there are few clinically challenging situations where it works really really well uh let's label those three situations and then we'll talk about recurrent cancers situation 1 is if it is a yeah situation 1 is if it's a micropapillary cancer a papillary proven histology and it's less than 10 mm now less than 15 mm we can treat it with ablation rather than keeping the patient just on surveillance or rather than going for a surgery situation 2 is if the patient is a macro cancer a follicular or a papillary but a inoperable candidate is not approved for anesthesia or surgery has anchor using spondylitis severe untreatable asthma then of course we can offer ablation as a second line technique but third situation is the situation we are talking about where it's a recurrent cancer and the surgeon despite surgery and uh, radioactive iodine there are deposits in the post op thyroid bed all the cervical lymph node and the surgeon is not too keen of going back in because of various reasons right from additions to an operable candidate now or age there ablation whether it's radio frequency or microwave ablation has a big time role earlier we considered it a palliative technique and we said okay let us debulk most of the lymph nodes or the deposits with ablation and hopefully uh, we increase the survival but when actually koreans and chinese started doing it they found that they are having achieving cure rates as high as 82 to 92% meaning that uh, they could destroy the cancer in almost 92% cases in some studies high volume studies and the cancer did not return the overall survival was of a normal person so with simple hydro dissection of course because these are lymph nodes or deposits uh, not in the orthotopic thyroid bed they are very close to critical structure so you have to be careful while ablating them or burning them you don't want non target thermal damage and that is why the technique of hydro dissection comes handy you separate all these adjacent structures with fluid and then you burn the central island of target tissue uh, which is a metastatic recurrent deposit or a lymph node and you easily burn it it sometimes takes a few seconds to burn these smaller deposits and uh, the patient can hopefully be cancer free or at least prolong survival in a patient which otherwise would have been inoperable and untreatable Okay, so that was a very great insight. So moving on to the next question, as safety is obviously a major concern, how do the long-term safety profile compare between RF and the microwave ablation regarding surrounding tissues? Yes. So whether the short-term profile or the long-term profile, we have found this technology to be very very safe, but in skilled hands. For someone who is starting out with RF and microwave. and if they do not have enough ultrasonographic procedure uh, experience then it can be a nightmare while doing thermal ablation they can actually cause damage to the trachea the esophagus the recurrent laryngeal nerve causing voice change the median cervical ganglion causing horner syndrome the triad of ptosis and anhidrosis and meiosis they can cause injuries to esophagus to strap muscle the list is endless even rarely brain arteries 
so the first technique that one must learn before even doing ablation ablation is a very simple technique if someone knows to do a fnac ultrasound guided they can do ablation but the first technique they should learn is hydro dissection how to separate whatever adjacent critical structure is very close to the nodule separate it away under sonography guidance with using saline or dextrose depending on the technology used and only then start the ablation taking care that if the fluid is absorbed and the hydro dissection interval is reducing then to refill it or use a continuous hydro dissection technique if this is done well and if the operator is experienced enough to do this and some cases if it's not succeeding then to stage the intervention finish off 95% of the nodule when it shrinks finish off the rest of the margins with thermal ablation then the whether it's short term or long term safety profile it is excellent in the past personal anecdotal data in the past 550 cases of ablation and 150 cases of embolization we have not had a single permanent or a durable voice change or any other complication because of the procedure the only minor complications we have seen are transient which can be jaw pain referred jaw pain or ear pain mild neck pain and sometimes uh, mild fever which can be easily dealt with antibiotics or painkillers and even that ratio is very less so overall the complication potential complication safety profile is very very smooth uh, with nearly a 0% complication rate that was interesting and say that you have covered all the safety uh, so let's move on to the last question uh, let's talk about the cutting edge approaches what are hybrid approaches combining thermal ablation with immunotherapy for advanced thyroid or malignancies yes so as we spoke we are now meeting more and more challenges in thyroid um, there is one group of patients which presents very early micropapillary cas where we feel that even operating would be over aggressive and we can keep it under surveillance but now we have a second group where the patient comes with a widespread disease with metastasis beyond uh, the neck that is a group where probably neither surgery nor ablation nothing works so there the role of immunotherapy comes in big time and today we are seeing so many markers in the next genome sequencing studies that we do for which we have targeted therapies and uh, compared to traditional chemotherapy these targeted therapies are working excellent uh, now comes in the role of immunotherapy also so a precision medical oncologist can really start these therapies and uh, we have seen a cancer go down from a stage 4 metastasis to as much as zero i mean no cancer residual cancer left just with these therapies alone but occasionally there are cases where the lung meds the visceral meds are taken care of by the immunotherapy but the local disease is still the disease load is still high and there we can combine ablation to destroy that load doing a surgery in a stage 4 metastatic cancer may not make sense but doing a palliative and potentially curative ablation uh, combining it with immunotherapy may make a lot of sense Uh, Korea has recently published data where they actually ablated patients with high grade local uh, locally invasive metastatic carcinomas which were actually uh, intratracheal but they did RFA they allowed it to reduce even intratracheal sometimes cryoablation and it's working great so they have achieved uh, survival rates of more than 5 years and still the patients are nearly R0 on imaging so uh, disease free on imaging so now whether it is locally advanced or metastatic we can take care of the local or locally advanced tumors with ablation and the precision medical oncologist can take care of the metastatic disease with uh, immunotherapy or targeted therapy especially uh, and uh, it may work wonders even for a uh, completely uncurable patient who otherwise would have had less than 6 months survival um, that was dr garberry well put together answer thank you so much for joining in and uh, Thank you to our viewers for tuning in and remember if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions do not hesitate as to join our Medsanas platform Medsanas platform is not just a resource it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare so until next time stay tuned take care Thank you.